So I asked my patrons what tutorial they want to see next, and they voted on this one. Five ways to make your map look good. By the way, if you love maps and you want to vote on future tutorial ideas, go check out my Patreon page. And if you want to master the art of map animations, go check out my masterclass. Everything's linked down in the description. Let's get into it. Now, this first tip is probably the most important, and that is style for scale. Let's say, for example, we're designing some elements for a static map. In this case, we'll only need to worry about one specific map scale, as it is indeed a static map. Map animations, however, you can actually zoom in and zoom out, so you have to worry about something called zoom-based styling, or how these map elements are going to look at all these different zoom levels. GeoLayers gives you a couple of different ways to control this. First and foremost, you have geometry simplification. So when you draw out your map features from the GeoLayers panel in Adobe After Effects, it will draw them out as vector shape layers, and the simplification controls how many vertices will be applied. There are three different modes. You have no simplification, you have max zoom, and current zoom. I suggest always having some kind of simplification just because the algorithm, if you don't have anything selected, it will just throw as many vertices as it possibly can. Even if you have a really simple straight line, it will add vertices along that line. And this is really not great computationally. It takes a lot of power and it will really be taxing on your computer system and take your renders way longer than needed. And sometimes it'll be almost impossible to work with inside of Adobe After Effects if you have too many vector shape layers drawn out without any simplification. It's always great to use current zoom or if you already have an animation in place you can use max zoom which will draw out the simplification based on the max zoom of your entire animation. You also have auto stroke width which is very important. If you select this it will automatically adjust the width of your strokes as you zoom in and out relative to the size of your map composition and that zoom level. If you don't have it selected it will maintain that size based on when you drew those out. You can also take control over your label templates and elements that you pin to the map. If you jump over to the effect controls panel with those layers selected you'll be able to specify whether these scale with the map or not. To summarize, if you're zooming on your map, style for scale. Now, on the topic of zooms, this leads me to tip number two, which is add context. Sometimes when you're zoomed in really, really far on a map like this, a viewer will look at the map and not understand where they are geographically. This is a great opportunity to use a locator map. Now, if you want to create one of these, you can use a script that's inside of GeoLayers. So if you just go click on this little button right here, it says run script file. And then down here, you can draw out the map comp view. So if you have two map comps, you can essentially scale one down and use it as a locator map. And then it will automatically animate that map comp view based on your main map comp animation. If you wanna see in detail how to get this done, I will link to a standalone tutorial down in the uh, video description. Also in this script, you can add a scale bar and a north needle. Very, very cool. Go do it. Another great resource is this add features to browser. If you click on this, you'll find download features. And if you weren't aware, there are all these natural earth global data sets that you can directly access from within the panel here. You click on it, it's gonna download it straight to your feature browser. And you should definitely check out Natural Earth's website. It's naturalearthdata.com slash downloads. You'll find over there, there are a ton of additional data sets that will help you add context to your map. Things like graticules, time zones, I think they have tectonic plates, coastlines, coral reefs, whatever you need, you can probably find it over there. They even have, I think, a vector data set for bathymetry, which is pretty crazy. And the beauty of Natural Earth, as always, is that it's completely free to use in all your projects. Tip number three is visual hierarchy. This is using design techniques to really control your viewer's attention. So if someone's looking at your map for the first time, what elements do you want them to see first? Well, you can use things like color, contrast, size, and basic motion design techniques to really control this. This map animation of Panama that I did is a perfect example. So I'm gonna go over what I did to make this work. So first I created two comps of this satellite map here. And then I separated the first one by applying a track map of the Panama country like feature layer. Once I had those separated, I really subdued both the saturation and the luminance levels of that background layer that immediately made Panama stand out. And then I also applied a vignette to really draw the attention of that background toward the center and so that the light would really fall off on the edges. And since that's just applied to the background, it really makes that country layer stand out. 
And then I also applied this really thin white stroke to the Panama Country layer, which you can see right there, as well as that really strong drop shadow, which is really the main piece that makes this thing pop off screen and give it that depth. The saturation of the country layer is also a bit subdued and brought down. That's to help those other elements pop out on screen. When I draw the canal animation on, it really pops because it has that glow, it's super saturated, and it has very good contrast and it's easy to see. And then of course, to draw the viewer's attention to the end of the canal here, we actually zoom in on that area and then use little motion design callouts like animated crosshairs to really show the viewer where to look. Simple. I'm also a big fan of clouds. Clouds add so much to map animations and you can use them to control what your viewer is looking at. There are many instances where I've created a map animation and it just looks so flat. You zoom out, there's just too much dead space. So the second you start to like pop in clouds, you can really control the frame of where you want your viewer to look. Not only that, you get the added benefit of this really subtle like secondary movement with these cloud animations. You can have them rolling real subtle. You don't wanna draw too much attention away from whatever you're framing up. But if you have that real subtle movement, it just gives something, you know, the extra pop to your mouth. There's not a lot of color in those and you can blur them out to make sure they're not distracting. Also, they will give you like a parallax and a depth. So if you pull them off your map, if you're doing like, like real subtle pitch and bearing moves, the clouds will, will add so much to the depth. It's just, it's really great. Tip number four is one of my favorites, and it's really just about keeping it simple. I love these minimal designs. In fact, one of the things that I like to do when creating a map is to strip it down to its most basic elements. Like, what do I have to show to communicate whatever I'm trying to communicate? What are the necessary elements? And I like to keep it minimal in all aspects. Minimal color palette, minimal fonts. If you keep the colors down, you desaturate or bring down a base map, it makes it much easier to create a very good looking design quickly. I feel like it's much easier to, to end up with something nice looking. And then with your fonts, as long as you keep it like two to three fonts maximum, it's much easier to control the look and make sure that it's not too cluttered or weird looking. I really feel like once you introduce all of those aspects and elements, you, your design skills have to be on point to be able to control the look. When you have that many elements in place, uh, you have to know what you're doing. This is also true with the geometry. If you simplify that geometry, it makes life much easier. Um, again, I would suggest simplifying at current zoom, unless you're going for some really simplified look, you can really simplify the geometry to get that specific like low poly, low geometry look. Keep it simple. Speaking of blur, tip number five, blur it out. So I will admit it, I am a fan of the shallow depth of field look. I use it often. It's another one of those tricks to really draw your viewer's attention to where you want them to look. You just make a shallow depth of field look and then that plane of view you can control really tightly and it just gives you um, a much nicer look. With GeoLayers, you're not really using a 3D camera so it's a little bit trickier, a little bit you know more difficult to do this. I created a standalone tutorial showing you how to do it but you essentially use a camera lens blur um, with a blur map, blur map? Yeah, blur map layer where you just put a mask on a solid and then you can control it with a mask essentially. Also, I love using blur in terms of motion blur. So motion blur is another thing inside of, I feel like everything inside of GeoLayers has its own workflow. It's kind of separate from like a native uh, After Effects workflow. So with motion blur, you can toggle on the motion blur switch like normal for all of your elements, like your map elements that you draw, your map features that you draw. But for the actual map comps, you have to jump into the map comp settings to toggle on motion blur. And if you're working with a lot of map comps, specifically if you have like a water mask map comp, you wanna be sure to turn on motion blur for all of those because if you even leave one out, it, it can look very bizarre. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Once again, if you wanna vote on future tutorial ideas, go check out my Patreon page. If you wanna master the art, of map animations using GeoLayers 3. Go check out my GeoLayers 3 Masterclass. Many of the clips you saw in this particular tutorial are from the Masterclass, so I really go deep in that class. It's really great, go check it out. I got a new course coming out. I'll link to that in the video description as well if you'd like to learn more. Bye.